morning. We are vlogging this week. I am so excited. I have not felt like the pull or the desire to vlog in so long. And yesterday I actually filmed a sit down video and I don't think that video will ever make it to YouTube. I decided I wanted to do this instead. But essentially when I had a video go up in January about how I was feeling so overwhelmed and I shared solutions that were helping me, but it was such a short term solution. February was crazy. So essentially, I feel like I've been headed down a path where I would eventually have a teacher burnout relapse. So I wanted to share what I'm doing to prevent that from happening. Essentially what's been going on is I knew that this was going to be a challenging year being a new mom taking on a new prep I didn't know I was going to get a second new prep with a grade level that is just so far out of my comfort zone I did not know that I would have this schedule that literally changes from day to day and I put so much time into cultivating this routine that would make it so that even when I had a baby, I would be good, I'd be able to do my planning and everything at school. That hasn't happened because my schedule's so crazy. So essentially I've categorized this year as being like a transition year. It's just a crazy year. I don't know that it could really be any better. I'm basically making the best of the situation that I'm in. and. What's bothering me is that I'm not like on my teacher A game at all. And being a perfectionist, even though I've been like, okay, it's just a transition year, I still can't accept it and I'm still like just upset with myself because I want to give my students the very best. So that's been going on all year where it's come to the point where I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to burn out is I have two classes that are just difficult personality wise, not even behaviors, one class, it's a little bit of behavior, but these two classes just have personalities that are just difficult, like constant negativity. And teenagers are moody, like I know that, I've lived that, but it's just different this year. Knowing that I'm not going to be at the top of my game this year, my goal has been to be completely present with my students, give them the very best of myself while they're here. And I've done that very well until like, February where I'm exhausted. We had so many delays and snow days and early dismissals. They kind of kill all of my productivity, which hurts. Like, I don't even know how to explain. Like, it, it feels like it just snowballs. So when I get here and I have students that just have this abundant negative energy, I just got to the point where I'm like, I cannot deal. I've started to feel like I've been losing the joy in teaching and that's when I feel like I'm going to burn out. So today's Monday of a new week. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fired up. I just woke up and did not want to get out of bed. Really, really wanted to hit that snooze button. But one thing that I'm trying to do better is just get up when my alarm goes off. I feel like we hear so frequently from like productivity experts that you should not check your phone in the morning before you do anything else. These people, however, have not had to wait for a snow closing or delay announcement. I always get into a funk throughout the winter, partly because of that, because I'm waiting to hear, are we going to school? Are we not going to school? Because, you know, it impacts your day. It's kind of important. So before getting up, it's just nice to know. However, that eventually becomes a habit where you just don't get out of bed when your alarm goes off. So I got up this morning, I like to get up and exercise, and what I need to remind myself to actually get myself up is that I'm going to have so much more energy from getting up and working out than I would have from laying in bed for that extra nine minutes. So I did that this morning and I'm feeling good. I'm reading the book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Alrod. So that book is actually free on Amazon if you have Prime. I just downloaded it through my Kindle app, started reading it last night, and I'm hoping that I can start a really good morning routine and that will help me overall. So until I finish the book and kind of get a good routine going, right now I'm focusing on getting up and getting some kind of exercise, whether it's going on the elliptical or doing yoga or a workout video.
and a quick tip if you like doing workout videos or yoga videos on YouTube, I made a playlist for just working out and just yoga. I put the playlist in order of time duration. So I put the shortest videos at the top and the longest videos at the bottom because usually when I'm picking out a workout, time is a major factor. So now it's just really easy to find the 10 minute videos and the 15 minute videos. I am also focusing on reestablishing routines and just picking habits that are good that make me feel better. So that's what I've been working on at home. And another thing that I'm trying to focus on is just dressing well for school because with the weather being crappy and everything, I've kind of fallen into a pattern where I'm wearing jeans constantly, I'm always wearing the same boots, and while it's nice to be comfortable, especially in the winter, I'm a big believer in when you look good, you feel good, so this morning I put more effort into my makeup and I'm wearing like a skirt and cardigan, like I just feel good about how I'm dressed today. So I'm excited to start today. I have a few things to do just around here. I wanna like tidy up a little bit more and just get ready for my day. Filming this way feels so weird. So I'll talk about my school day tomorrow, but I got home at like 4.30. It's almost 5.30 now. And I've been trying to establish a routine for when I get home from work. The frustrating thing is that I can do this today through Wednesday and then Thursday my grandmother's going to be here from Florida so I don't get to do my routine that day so it's hard to establish a routine when things like that keep happening and that's how I felt throughout the entire month of February I was trying to change things how they were working in my classroom and with my students and I would start or initiate a change and then we would have all these snow days or not even snow days we barely had snow days which just feels kind of funny to say we've had five but we would have so many early dismissals and delays and they'll kind of kill everything so i have a filming companion here are you waving so he's been hanging out with me in the kitchen and i came home i took care of him he needed a bottle and then I changed so I come home and basically just put on some kind of sweatpants or pajama pants or something and I got laundry started for the towels I cleaned my Tupperware from lunch so I've got that cleaned I have my apple and trail mix ready for tomorrow I'm just going to put a salad together and I feel like that was the whole routine but it takes a while especially right now my husband is at a doctor's appointment so it wouldn't be quite as slow if he'd been here because he probably would have helped me out with the dishes or something so i'm gonna put salads together and check in in a little bit so it's just after seven and i finished making salads made dinner cleaned that up and dinner was just left over so i popped it in the oven and that was it um fed the baby got him dressed for bed he's playing on the floor right now he's actually getting tired he usually takes like a nap before bed which is weird but it works because he needs to have like a bottle before we really put him down for the night good morning and happy tuesday so i didn't get to vlog about what happened in school at all yesterday because at the end of the day i had a group come in and they used my classroom for their club meetings so i didn't get to vlog about anything but yesterday i just feel like it was kind of uneventful anyway the one thing that i love about vlogging is that it's just like another way to preserve memories and the one thing that i feel like i want to remember from yesterday was a student that said you know how at disney world you're like surrounded by disney princesses and everything he says that's what i feel like when i come here i feel like i'm being taught by disney princess it was the cutest thing ever Yesterday my general geometry classes worked on a project and it's just a very very simple project I adapted it from a PBL bundle for geometry that I bought on teachers pay teachers. I'll link it below, but I heavily adapted it Students are shown three different cake designs and they're all the same price So ideally students are trying to find the volume of each cake and decide which one they want to use and the point is that they would generally or expectedly want the one that has the most cake for the price. So there's cakes that are made up of rectangular prisms, cylinders, and a mix of the two. So if you're unaware, this is like a very, very easy project. So what I did last year when I had students do this project was changed the numbers on 
them so that there's four different versions because I have four students sitting at a table and the students I had last year would basically just copy off of each other for the entire project. So by them having different numbers, it makes it so that they're all doing their own work. And if they're helping each other, they're helping each other with the process or procedure. They're not basically giving each other answers. So I screwed up the copies for this project, not once, but twice. The first time I unknowingly made copies of just one version. So everybody had the same numbers, which is funny because I made this big thing at the beginning of class about how I made sure that they didn't have the same numbers. And then I messed up the settings on the copier so that they didn't have the actual front and back. I had to basically print out the back separate and give them the back on a separate sheet of paper. I had to staple everything together. Not a big deal. But once I realized that those two issues had occurred, I went and remade copies for the second class that I have and just was not paying attention, put in the wrong setting. There were different versions, but they still didn't have the back. They actually had two different versions on one paper. It was, it was a mess. But the world did not end. I was able to adapt. My students were able to adapt. Everything's fine. So now I actually have to just grade the projects from my first class. My second class was already graded yesterday because they are a smaller class. My geometry class is taking a quiz today. They are basically done with their unit on coordinate geometry. Today we're practicing doing proofs with slope and distance formula. And then we'll have a test on Friday. My general geometry starts their transformations unit today. And in Algebra 2, we are in our polynomials and rationals unit. We actually, I think, will finish that on Thursday. Tomorrow we have a conference day, and then we just have Thursday and Friday this week. So, so I think that's it for now. I cannot think of anything else to say. So check in at the end of the day. So school ended maybe close to 10 minutes ago now. I'm feeling anxious to get out of here, but I wanted to do a vlog update first. So I made it to 1 p.m. before I realized that the avocado that fell out of my breakfast sandwich this morning landed in my lap. So it had been there all day. I mean, I just had this bizarrely colored stain right where you wouldn't want a stain. Thankfully, my shirt today was along. I don't think anyone saw it. At least nobody said anything to me all day. So fingers crossed. Today was one of the days where I only had four of my six classes and I'm just so grateful for that because today was just, it was kind of a weird day. I talked about how the energy of my students I feel is like a huge contributor to me feeling burnt out because I'm basically trying to counterbalance their negativity with my positivity and it's like one against, you know, 13 to 25 depending on the class and that's difficult. Usually my one class actually like feeds my positive energy and today they drained it before I got to my actual classes where I need my positive energy. So it's just, it's just been feeling rough. So I got to speak to one of my colleagues today while I was doing hall duty and she kind of made some suggestions about what I could do to change their energy and it just gave me this feeling that there is a solution, there has to be a solution and I know that relationships only does so much for the situation because in one class I have really good relationships with my students. In another class, they've basically kept me at like arm's length all year long and I think that's just them. I also think that they have support systems where they don't need a teacher relationship like other students do. I don't even know how to describe that, but that's just how I'm feeling. So this year I'm teaching Algebra 2 for the first time. That's one of my new preps. So my department chair loves the curriculum that was put together by eMath Instruction. I'll link it below. It's free for the materials. He has videos on YouTube where he basically does the notes. It's cool. It's good. There's things that I like about it. I don't love it though. And I don't think it's the right curriculum for my students. At least not the way that I implement it. I'm very much reliant on having notes and just having like an example to look at and then taking that example and applying it on the homework. My students and I prefer curriculum from All Things Algebra. The problem is it's expensive and I've been buying it unit by unit. She has like the full course bundle which would save a lot of money but I don't have that kind of money to spend up front so I've been buying unit by unit when they're on sale. So I was comparing the trig units, because that's our next unit for Algebra 2, between the two curricula, and 
it just looked like they did not overlap. It looked like eMath instruction had things that I needed and all things algebra was missing those topics. So I typed up the notes using eMath instruction as a guide. And then I go look in all things algebra just to compare notes on the unit circle. Realize they have the same exact things. Like everything I need is in the all things algebra curriculum under a different name. So I am kind of aggravated because I feel like I just wasted a lot of time typing up notes that I'm now going to completely redo because my students would benefit more from all things algebra. So I'm trying to just remind myself that I did gain something by typing up those notes. I kind of got an idea of what the students need to be able to do from the lessons. And so I'm able to better assess what components I take or tweak from all things algebra. So that's been my day. I'm going to wrap it up here. Might check in later at home. Might not. You'll find out before I do. One thing that I did to help myself with burnout was just clear out my desk space. I kind of wish I'd done like a before and after. Russell's joining me here today. So essentially I just kind of cleared up like that top part. There was a lot of extra stuff and clutter there before. So now I just have precisely what I need. I put my planners and notebooks and stuff in this thing so now I can see their covers. Before they were in this magazine file and I couldn't see their covers. So just the littlest thing makes me happy. That's still a mess. I don't know what I can do about that. But I posted on Instagram like two weekends ago that I was working from home instead of the library and I could not concentrate. I ended up cleaning my desk space then and I felt so much better coming in here ever since. Good morning and happy Wednesday. So last night was a little bit rough. I got home, I did my homecoming like routine Everything was kind of pushed back a little bit later because my husband had a faculty meeting. I ran errands after school. I got like t-shirts and a onesie because, you know, my son and I are going to be representing Pi for Pi Day tomorrow. And I went to the bank, got gas, did all that stuff. But basically it set me back like half an hour. And by the time I got through the routine, made dinner, ate dinner, it was seven o'clock. So I was just feeling like really crappy and defeated last night, to be honest. And I wanted to stop working at 8.30. I just want to like start getting ready for bed and just basically start like slowing down and everything. But my computer had other plans and just decided to not allow me to finish my notes to barely work. So it took me an hour just to get one thing done, which is why I was so frustrated. But I just stopped at nine o'clock. I said I could either stay up late and get this done or I could just save it for tomorrow and take some time to take care of myself. So at nine o'clock, I just did a little bit of yoga and then just got ready for bed. And so because I took that little bit of time for myself and made sure to get to bed at a decent time, I feel way better today. I'm in a much better mood. We have a conference day, so I get to just basically be comfortable today. So it's just after 7.30 now. I'm gonna try and get this done. I think our day starts, starts at 8.15, so. I've got some time. I'm actually going to set myself a timer and try to do the two pages of notes I need to do in half an hour and get everything printed so that while we're being talked to, I can make up my answer keys for the week. It's also really nice just to be here and just be able to do work and not have to focus on getting my classroom ready for students or anything. Everything is ready for tomorrow. I made sure of that yesterday. So I don't have to update my boards or anything. I did straighten out my desks. And this morning when I came in, I spent less than five minutes just cleaning up and straightening up my desk space and I feel so much better. So it's the end of the day. Our afternoon PD was awesome. We have a math specialist at our local BOCES. So she's kind of like our go-to person in the county for basically professional development for math. And I think she was hired more recently, so we've never met her before, but she was awesome. The PD that we had was awesome. It was about mathematical discourse, so we talked about creating a culture where students are comfortable being wrong and where they cheer each other on. She gave us like a structure to have students work in a group to talk about a math problem, not even solve it, but talk about it. And then she provided us with templates to track student skills, to determine what skills we we're actually trying to target. And it was just awesome. And I feel like I have so much that I've taken away from it and I don't want to forget any of it. And I feel like I know I'm not going to apply any of it right away because my lessons are planned. 
I honestly feel like I'm drowning in just trying to plan my lessons as is. So I'm looking at this as things that need to happen over the summer and I really, really want to, but I just, I need to make sure I don't forget. We're about halfway through March now, so I'm starting to make that like mental to-do list of things I'm going to do over the summer and in those last two weeks of June where we basically have Regents exams going on and we're either scoring, proctoring, or just getting ready for the summer and packing up. Overall, PD today is enjoyable. I love professional development, so it's just a good way to get yourself invigorated. This was not like a planned strategy to help a teacher burnout, but it definitely helps. So if you're able to find some professional development online that you can just access for free, it's amazing. Especially if you can find the right kind of professional development or, you know, check out what you can do through your school. Good morning and happy pie day. I have my pie shirt today. It says inspired. I have like the imaginary eye, but it's kind of wide, so it's hard to see, which is really annoying thing with teacher t-shirts is the designs are so wide, I have to like rotate myself so that people can actually read it, which is really annoying. So when I designed this, I could have made it not so wide on the shirt, but then the letters would have been like really tiny. So you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. So I'm feeling pretty good right now, but last night I was not, like I had just anxiety. I got a headache and I feel like the headache must be stemming from stress because I had the same headache um, for like two nights last week and it was just annoying because the one night I had it and I was like, I'm gonna go to sleep and I'll wake up and I'll feel better and I woke up and the headache was still there. So I think it has to be stress. I'm currently behind in my planning and that's stressing me out. I thought I had a review done for my Algebra 2 class that they need for Monday. It's not done, so I need to do that. And just little things, like tomorrow for Algebra 2, I have it planned out. We're going to be just practicing stuff and taking a quiz, but I don't have the practice thing together. So I'm going to like cut and paste to make a worksheet from this website called Kuta Software. They actually have like a software you can buy and it just generates worksheets for you, but they have like a sample of like every topic. So you could just print and go the sample worksheet. I'm gonna like just cut and paste from that. So I feel like there's really not a lot to update on. I really just need to put the camera down and get something done. Like everything's ready to go and set up for today in the classroom. So I can just sit down and do what I need to do. Today's going to be a good day because it's pie day and there's pie during lunch, which I'm really excited about. Today's also going to be a little bit stressful because I have hall duty today and all of my classes. So what that means is I have prep third period and then I get lunch after fifth period, but I'm basically going all day long because that prep is gonna get used for setting up absent work, hopefully making copies, but if that has to wait till tomorrow, it'll be fine. I'm gonna stop rambling and just get something done. Today wasn't so bad. I was actually able to get stuff done during my prep. I had a lot of students absent, which was like a really nice change of pace, but it's enough that I didn't have to prep too many absent work packets because I'm gonna go over the same thing again tomorrow with the people that weren't here. So I just feel a lot better than I did this morning. I got to stay after a few minutes and just get a little bit more done. My son has to go to the doctor, so I'm meeting my mom at the doctor's office for a 3.30 appointment and can't think of anything else to report. Today was just kind of like a blah day. It was busy, but I got a little bit of stuff done and realized that the one thing I thought I didn't have done was completely done and it was just saved in the wrong spot, I guess. So. Good morning, it's Friday, it's 7.37. Today's been hectic. Last night, my grandmother and her sister got in from Florida. We went to my parents' house to spend time with them. We had dinner together. We got home like 10 minutes after Russell's usual bedtime. Today, my mom, my grandmother, aunt, everybody is going to New Jersey. They're taking Russell with them. So for the first time ever, my son is leaving the state and I'm not with him. And logically, it's fine. It does, it's not even a big deal. But as a mom, I'm just a little bit upset about it. So they're going to visit with family. The whole point of my grandmother and her sister coming was to visit with their aunt who passed away yesterday. They were hoping to get to see her, you know, while she was alive. It's hard to talk about this. I'm trying to not get emotional. She's like Russell's great, great, great aunt. So it just feels like 
a distant relationship, but she was just so like near and dear to our family. So what I wanted to talk about was that like yesterday, I just felt that I really would have benefited from having a mental health day, which would be my next tip. If you're trying to prevent teacher burnout, you get sick days. Mental health days, I think are covered by sick days. So if you get sick days, use them. And I really need to take my own advice. But like I was saying yesterday would have been like an ideal mental health day because it was just a crazy day. And then I was thinking about maybe today would be a good day to take a mental health day. My geometry class needs to take a test. So it's hard to do that and leave that with a sub. So I'm here today and also just in the mindset of I'm probably going to have to take a day off for the funeral and I have a dentist appointment later this month so I don't want to be out too much either. The silver lining of my crazy crazy schedule is that eventually I will have a day like today where I teach four classes. I do not have a duty so I have four planning periods today which I need. I need really really badly I still have to do answer keys I have to make copies for next week I have to set up my smart notebook presentations so everything is set and ready to go for next week which is super important because I don't know what kind of time I will have over the weekend to work on stuff my family's here and I want to spend as much time as possible with my family that's visiting that I don't get to see very often Another thing you can do that I wanted to mention is listen to podcasts. There are a lot of great podcasts out there. My two favorites right now are Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I found her podcast the summer after I had my year of burnout and I felt like that was very helpful. It's kind of like getting professional development, but you get to pick and choose like what you're listening to and what you're hearing about. So Angela Watson's podcast is linked to teacher productivity and teacher mental health and helping teachers with like little things. So if you go back to like the older episode, there's things about like classroom management. And then her most recent episode was about syndromes that teachers have, which I think I had like the last three. The only one I can remember right now is like teacher martyr syndrome, which I do have a little bit, like anytime I'm discussing teaching with anyone in public. The other podcast that I've been loving lately is healthy teacher, happy teacher. If you follow the whimsical teacher on Instagram, she's absolutely adorable. I love her, but she started a podcast and it's dedicated to like teacher self-care and kind of preventing teacher burnout. So highly recommend those two. And there's others. So if you look and maybe those aren't like the people that you want to listen to, there's other teachers out there doing podcasts. Another thing I like to do is use music to influence my mood. So I've made several playlists and I have a playlist of music that's relaxing, a playlist of music that gets me energized. And so whatever I need, I will go to that playlist. Another thing that I did to boost my mood for today was wear a teacher t-shirt because sometimes they're silly and funny. And so today I have, if you could just show your work, that would be great because my students are taking a test in geometry today. So I need them to show their work and you know, they don't a lot. It's really annoying. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up for this morning and I'll just be checking in later. I think today was the first day all year that I was able to just go directly home from school, ever. I do not have to go to my mom's house to pick up my son because they're all in Jersey right now. It's five after four. And I'm still here, which is really, really frustrating because I was so looking forward to just going straight home. I really thought I was going to have an hour to myself, start editing this vlog, but no, I'm still here because I did that much stuff to do today. I was grading basically all day. I had tests in one class, um, quiz in another class, and then both of those classes had homework due. So it was just like non-stop grading fest today plus i just wanted to get my stuff ready for next week I'm trying to file my papers one-handed and it's just not working so i was going 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 all day long i don't even feel exhausted i just feel like i want everything done and now just knowing that on tuesday i'm going to have a funeral so i'm not going to be here it just adds a little bit more pressure of, I need to make sure I have stuff done because when I come in on Monday, now I need to get ready for a sub the next day. So 
that was just my thought process um just get everything done plus i had grading stuff from throughout the week just things that were turned in late or whatever that needed to be graded i stayed late finishing that and i think now i'm finally ready to leave and i'm going home and i'm going to do something i want to do which would be edit the vlog because that's just like i don't know a task that i can kind of enjoy a little bit sometimes until a certain point um and my husband and i are going to go out for dinner i think we're going to go to like panera or something simple and easy like that but i'm just going to go enjoy time just me and my husband and that would be like my last teacher burnout prevention tip for the vlog spend time with people that you love or just do something for you essentially just find some kind of self-care for yourself and indulge in it I will have a blog post coming out all about self-care. Just be on the lookout for it because I don't know if I will link it to this blog. And once I have my teacher burnout prevention tips blog ready, it will be linked below. So I'm ending the vlog here. I hope you had a wonderful week. And I did because I'm looking at the bright side of everything. Everything may not be good, but there's something good in every day. And my other favorite quote, everything's going to be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. I also just wanted to take the time just to say that these are the things I'm working on. These are strategies that I'm using to help prevent myself from going into full burnout. And just the simple fact that it took from September to March to get here. That's six months to get to this stage. So it's not something that I'm going to be able to snap out of overnight. It's going to take some time. But I feel like because I've been through this before and I have an idea of what I'm looking for and what I can do, I'll be out of it before the end of the school year. So that will be it for this week's vlog. And as always, thanks for watching.